brown and gold and stretched like the slurring of a toothless drunk. Sweet Neighbour Talk coined it a mega estate. Your flat was in the north. One bedroom and seven bodies making do. You told yourself it was a small alcove set beyond the reach of the clock's hands. On Mondays, the detergent they used to clean the stairs smelled of bubblegum. So you would walk through the corridors that connected one block to another block, one joy to another joy. A system of nerves, a casing of sand and endless windows. Is this what the architect had in mind? A paradise of affordable bricks tucked under a blanket, shielded from the world. All that hopeful good on powder blue paper, measured lines defining angles of respite for the poor. What foresight he had. To put shops and laundrettes on the estate so mothers could send their children on errands, knowing that even if they walked a mile, their fawny ankles wouldn't ever set foot on open ground. To be lost to the city's clutches or feel the affliction of rain. How quickly rain dried, how loudly bricks hummed again as you went back to your life. You're tinkering, you're blooming, making do. Nothing the estate raised was a monster, yet the devil found good ground to plough his seeds. Gabos, the widening gyre, residents on the brink. Washed, rung, walking shrines, asking questions to which the architect maintained that their design was a good solution because of the times. It is true on paper there were no designs for a tomb, yet the east wing stairs were where Damalola was found. Blue dawn, blue body, blue lights, blue tapes.